In a world where most e-bikes are trying to blend in, the jackrabbit screams, look at me. Purists might argue that with its lack of pedals, it's a little bit more like a sit-down scooter than it is a fully electrified bike. But to be fair, that's exactly what jackrabbit is going for. The convenience of a scooter with the comfort of a bike. And now first, let's address the obvious. The Jackrabbit is weirdly small. It's like a mountain bike that shrank in the wash. And what's more, as there are no pedals, you obviously won't find a chain or gears either. At 24 pounds, that's 11 kilos, it's pretty light. The advertised range is 12 miles, the top speed is 20 miles per hour, and that's delivered by a 300 watt motor. And it will all cost you $1,200 new in a range of four spiffy colors. Now let's focus on that size for a little bit. I live in an apartment building that has a pretty small elevator, but with this thing, I can ride it straight in, no need to stand it up on end. And as lazy as it may sound, anything that makes it easier for me to get out of this building and on my way means I'm much more likely to use it. And the Jackrabbit is so small, it even fits in the back of my car. Not the trunk, I mean right behind the driver's seat. So bringing it on the metro or bus shouldn't be too much trouble either. Now, once you get on this thing, that is where the fun begins, though there are a few things to keep in mind. While the top speed is 20 miles per hour, it's hard to get there in anything other than optimal conditions. And the acceleration isn't slow, but once you get to around 15, 16 miles per hour, it tails off enough that you need a clear, smooth road ahead to hit that top speed. Inclines are also not the Jackrabbit's forte. If you hit a modest gradient at a good speed, you shouldn't have any problems. But once things get steeper and or you hit them slower, you might have to finish the job with your feet, like a kid on a balance bike. But sidewalk and inclines are just half the story. There's something about the slightly dirt bike aesthetic that makes you want to deviate into more adventurous terrain, even if it means adding a few minutes to your commute. Everything from tarmac to grass to dirt tracks suddenly become viable routes, Good luck with that on your scooter. It didn't take long before I started taking this thing out for rides for fun rather than just as a means of getting somewhere. After a full day stuck inside, there's no better way to blow away the cobwebs than to go out for a ride on the Jackrabbit. And while the bike may be doing all the work, you are still engaged in a way that you might not be on a regular bike, thanks to the different center of gravity and seating position. Cranking out a few miles or exploring parts of the city you might normally never bother with all added to the fun. And then that's when it happened. Three LEDs to indicate battery power is probably not enough. And I found this out about a mile away from home where with one shiny LED on the handlebar mounted indicator, the bike suddenly lost nearly all of its power. I've been having so much fun that I drained the battery and the three LED power indicator clearly isn't detailed enough to let you know you're really in the danger zone. Luckily for me, I live in a really flat city, so it's pretty easy to push this thing home. Although you can even kind of pump it like a skateboard if you really want to, although it's not a lot of fun. Worst of all, I had pre-calculated ahead of time that the ride I was about to do was well within the 12 mile range. And sure enough, when I came back and checked it out on Google, it was only a shade over seven miles. This only happened once on several rides at the same distance, so perhaps I just didn't let the battery fully charge. Or maybe I hit more inclines and rode at speed for longer. But that's the point. I didn't have the information I needed to know I was about to empty the proverbial tank. Thankfully, the batteries are removable and they are portable enough that you could definitely slip a spare into a backpack. But at $200 each, that is a reasonable spend just to relieve some anxiety. It's also slightly frustrating that if you had the previous Jackrabbit, the battery from that won't work with the latest model, despite being nearly identical. And if there's another small addition that would help here, it would be regenerative braking. Right now, the Jackrabbit doesn't have it, but with just one rear brake to speak of, it seems something that might be easy to implement and to enable a modest saving of power especially as most inner city commutes require a fair amount of stop start anyway. The above might sound like there are still quite a few areas for improvement, but the Jackrabbit remains about the most enjoyable electric ride I've tried in a long while. And if you couple that with the fact that it makes a lot of sense for those who don't want or need a full-size bike, and for whom a scooter just isn't the best alternative. And throw in the fact that you can also cover terrain that scooters can, or fit places where most bikes won't, and the Jackrabbit really does make a good case for itself. 
the fact that it's wildly fun is just an added bonus. For more news and reviews, head to Engadget.com.